The Eldritch Blast Sorlock is one of the strongest builds in Baldur's Gate 3 for the extremely high damage output thanks to multiple sources of damage from a single Eldritch Blast cast and very powerful items to complement it. This build has insane crowd control by pairing Frightened with Prone, forcing enemies to skip their turns repeatedly. The build also becomes strong very early on and is perfect for a Tav thanks to the super high charisma. To get started, choose Warlock at level 1. Make sure to select Eldritch Blast as one of your cantrips because it will be the action we use most often. For subclass, you'll want to choose the Fiend subclass because the temporary health after slaying an enemy can be helpful early on. For spells, you'll want Hex and Hellish Rebuke. Hex is a damage rider, adding necrotic damage to attack rolls. Since Eldritch Blast is an attack roll, each blast will deal additional necrotic damage when used on a hexed target. We'll want to use our bonus action to apply Hex before casting Eldritch Blast on a target for this bonus necrotic damage. Hellish Rebuke can be used as a reaction when attacking to deal fire damage. This can be a special helpful to finish off wounded enemies during their turn. At level 2, you'll want to select your Eldritch Invocations. Agonizing Blast is the best for an Eldritch Blast build because it adds your Charisma modifier to the damage it deals, and Charisma is where we put the majority of our ability points. You'll also want to select Repelling Blast. This causes your Eldritch Blast to push your targets back up to 4.5 meters away from you. This is incredibly powerful to both keep enemies away from melee range where you would get disadvantage from threatened, but also gives you the option to instantly kill kill enemies by pushing them into chasms. At level 3, you'll want to choose Scorching Ray as your next spell to learn. This spell hurls 3 rays of fire, each dealing 2-12 to 12 fire damage. This spell is most powerful when used on a hex target, since each ray of fire will gain additional necrotic damage, making this your best single target burst damage spell at this level, which is absolutely amazing. For your Pact Boon, you'll want to select Pact of the Chain. This gives you access to Find Familiar Imp. The Imp has invisibility, which can be used an unlimited number of times, which can be used outside of combat to initiate and surprise enemies, making them skip their turn, allowing you to sometimes end encounters before your enemies even have a chance to take a turn. At this level, you can also replace the spell you learned at level 1 with Cloud of Daggers. Cloud of Daggers deals 4d4 slashing damage in an area and is our best AoE option right now. At level 4, I'd recommend you get Misty Step, as it will be helpful to get around. You also get access to your first feat, which we'll use on ability improvement to increase our charisma to 19. Getting Auntie Ethel's hair to increase our charisma to 20 would be ideal for this build. At level 5, you'll get access to new powerful spells. Choose Fireball and replace Misty Step with Hunger of Hadar. Both Fireball and Hunger of Hadar are powerful spells, and Misty Step can be found on a lot of equipment, so it is no longer needed. At level 5, you'll also get another Eldritch Invocation. This time, choose Devil's Sight. This makes darkness much more powerful, allowing you to see through it, but your enemies cannot. This will also give your enemies disadvantage when they try to attack you while you sit in the darkness, and simultaneously give you advantage when you attack them. Also, your imp will now gain extra attack. At level 6, you'll want to go to Withers and change your class to Sorcerer. Sorcerers get proficiency in constitution saving throws, which helps you keep concentration on spells you'll be using, like Darkness or Haste. For cantrips, I would choose Firebolt, Minor Illusion, Mage Hand, and Light. For spells, Shield and Enhanced Leap are perfect. For your subclass, you'll want to choose Draconic Bloodline. This gives you Draconic Resilience, increasing your base armor class to 13 when not wearing armor. Since Potent Robes is our our best armor and it isn't armor, this fits perfectly. You'll also want to choose a Draconic Ancestry that matches which resistance you want. Fire is probably the most common damage type you'll run into, so any of the Fire Ancestries are a good choice, but Gold is probably the best for the Disguise Self utility. At level 2 Sorcerer, make sure to choose Meta Magic Twinned Spell and Extended Spell. This gives us the option to use Twinned Spell to cast Haste on two enemies simultaneously. At level 3 Sorcerer, make sure to choose Meta Magic Quickened Spell. This is the primary Meta Magic magic we'll be using to get an additional Eldritch Blast each turn. At level 4 Sorcerer, make sure to choose the Feat Ability Improvement and again put both points into Charisma. Our next level will go into Warlock, this time choosing the Great Old One subclass for Mortal Reminder. Mortal Reminder makes your critical hits cause Frightened in an area of effect, which makes them unable to move and receive disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. This is extremely powerful for keeping enemies controlled. At level 2 Warlock, this this time our Eldritch Invocations will be Agonizing Blast and Devil's Sight. Our next two levels will both go into Sorcerer to obtain Haste, Fireball, Counterspell, and Elemental Affinity Resistance. To activate this resistance, all you have to do is cast a Firebolt and it will last until long rest. Once we have six levels of Sorcerer, the last four levels will all go into Fighter. At level one Fighter, choose Defense Fighting Style, and at level three, choose Champion for Improved Critical Hit. Since we chose the Great Old One Warlock subclass, 
will want as much critical hit chance as possible. And our last level will be in Fighter to unlock our final feat, Spell Sniper, reducing our roll needed for a crit by one. Moving on to the best in slot gear for this build, starting with the helm. The best helm for this build is Birthright. It increases your charisma by two to a max of 22. Since our build is relying so heavily on charisma, this is an obvious choice, and you can obtain this in Sorceress Sundries. If Roland is dead, Lorokin's projection sells it. If both Roland and Lorokin are alive, Roland will sell it. And if Roland is alive but Lorokin is dead, it can be pickpocketed from Roland in Ramazith's tower. The best cloak for this build is the Cloak of the Weave. This cloak grants a plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls and allows you to absorb elemental damage once per short rest and deal an additional 1d6 of that element on your next attack. You can obtain this from Hellsick at the Devil's Fee in Act 3. The best armor for this build is the Potent Robe. It grants Gregarious Caster, causing your cantrips to deal additional damage equal to your Charisma modifier, and it grants Well Liked and Well Fortified, which grants temporary hit points equal to your Charisma modifier at the beginning of the wearer's turn. To get this robe, you need to complete the quest Rescue the Tieflings in Act 2, and Alfira will give this to you. This involves breaking out the prisoners inside Moonrise Towers and making sure Alfira doesn't die in Act 1, or you won't be able to get these robes. When it comes to gloves, the second best gloves for this build are the Spell Might Gloves. These gloves grant an additional 1d8 damage to a spell that requires an attack roll at the cost of a minus 5 penalty to that attack roll. The additional damage is incredible and your attack rolls should almost never miss. You can obtain these gloves by completing the quest Find Dribbles the Clown from Lucretius, or a much easier way to get them is to just pickpocket them off Lucretius or loot them off Lucretius's corpse. The best gloves for this build, however, are Crater Flesh Gloves. These gloves cause you to deal an additional 1d6 force damage whenever you score a critical hit. And this 1d6 force damage is a damage source, activating all of our damage riders again. However, it is currently bugged and is dealing much more than 1d6 force damage right now. Since we are stacking so much critical hit chance with this build, it fits perfectly. You can purchase these gloves from the Echo of Abazigal in the Murder Tribunal after you become an unholy assassin of Baal. The best boots for this build are Boots of Stormy Clamor. These boots inflict two turns of reverberation when the wearer inflicts a condition upon a hostile creature. When combined with Spine Shutter Amulet, which inflicts two turns of reverberation when the wearer deals damage with a ranged spell attack, you will very, very quickly reach five secs of reverberation and knock your target prone. Now, in order for a creature to remove prone, they need to use movement, but because of Mortal Reminder causing Frightened, which makes creatures unable to move, your target is actually unable to do anything but remain prone and thus skip their turn. You can purchase the Boots of Stormy Clamor from Omelum in the Mykonid Colony after completing the quest Help Omelum Investigate the Parasite. And of course, the best amulet for this build is the Spine Shutter Amulet, like we mentioned in the boots section. This amulet inflicts two turns of reverberation when the wearer deals damage with a ranged spell attack, and when combined with Boots of Stormy Clamor, which inflict two turns of reverberation when the wearer inflicts a condition upon a hostile creature, you will very quickly reach five stacks of reverberation and knock your target prone. And again, in order to remove prone, a target target needs to use movement, but because of Mortal Reminder causing Frightened, which makes them unable to move, your target is unable to do anything but remain prone and skip their turn. This amulet can be looted from the Mimic in the bedroom on the upper floor of Moonrise Towers. When it comes to your rings, the first ring you're going to want to get is the Coruscation Ring. This ring inflicts two turns of radiating orb upon the target when the wearer deals spell damage while illuminated by a light source. Radiating orb is powerful because it gives minus one to the target's attack rolls, and it also enables our next ring, Callus Glow Ring, to deal additional damage. The Coruscation Ring can be found very well hidden inside the Cellar of Last Light Inn, inside of a heavy chest. And the second ring, Callus Glow Ring, causes the wearer to deal an additional two points of radiant damage against creatures that are illuminated. Since we have the Coruscation Ring causing radiating orbs and illuminating the area, we'll always get these two additional points of radiant damage. Just make sure to cast light on your character so that you're always within a light source when whenever you use spells to activate Coruscation Ring. And finally, the Kellis Glow Ring can be found inside of an opulent chest inside the vault near Balthazar inside the Gauntlet of Shar. When it comes to your melee weapons, the first weapon you'll want to seek out is the Spell Sparkler. This quarterstaff grants two lightning charges to the wielder each time they deal damage with a spell or cantrip. Since Eldritch Blast deals damage multiple times as you level up, you'll generate lots and lots of lightning charges with this staff. You are rewarded the Spell Sparkler by saving Counselor Floric from the burn building in Joaquin's Rest. Make sure when you first encounter Joaquin's Rest, you 
immediately go and save her, because if you walk by without doing that, this weapon will be lost forever. You'll eventually replace this quarterstaff for Knife of the Undermountain King, which is one of the best weapons for this build. This knife reduces the number you need to roll a critical hit by one, which is perfect for our crit focus build. The Knife of the Undermountain King can be purchased from Ajak Nir Jira in Crash Yellick. For your second melee weapon, you'll want to get Rhapsody. This grants a plus one bonus to attack rolls, damage, and spell save DC for every foe you slay, up to plus three. And this can be found on the corpse of Cazador Zar. And for your ranged weapon slot, there's nothing better than the dead shot, and it's the best for this build because it reduces the number you need to roll a critical hit by one, again, supporting this highly crit focused build. So your final build will be six sorcerer, two warlock, four fighter. Six sorcerer gives us lots of spell slots to convert into sorcery points so that we can use Eldritch Blast as a bonus action each turn by using Meta Magic Quickened Spell. With Hate Bloodlust Elixir and Meta Magic Quickening, we can get up to four casts of Eldritch Blast per turn, and there are ways to get even more per turn, but I prefer this build more than them for maxing out critical strike chance and charisma and the incredible amount of spell slots you can convert into sorcery points.